Okay, I'm gonna let you into my not so secret secret. <laughs> I'm not naturally creative. I'm not good with open-ended tasks. So imagine my horror when in my invitation to interview for my first ever teaching job, I was asked to prepare to teach a geography lesson to a class of year nines, no problem, that would be observ observed by the principal, a bit nerve wracking, but again, no problem. Th this is what all teaching interviews involved back in the UK. So teach a year nine geography lesson on the topic of and that was the problem on the topic of anything. I could teach them anything I wanted. Oh, actually it was to include at least one photo. It had to be like a visual kind of lesson, but hey, that doesn't exactly whittle it down that much, does it? <laughs> it didn't even have to be from the year nine syllabus. What? So I was like, okay, come on, please give me something to go on people. Maybe they thought they were actually being kind, but for me, that was the worst possible type of instruction in terms of a lesson to plan. I seriously would have preferred them to tell me to teach an interesting lesson on watching paint dry. That would have felt like less of a challenge because at least I had somewhere to start with that, some sort of guideline, because I like direction and instructions and steps. And that's why I've found over time ways to make the open type tasks more structured, the fuzzy into clear, and develop strategies to transform the downright confusing into steps and checklists and templates. Now, for a long time, this was as much to help me get to grips with certain tasks or concepts for myself, but I've come to realize that it's actually super helpful to any teens whose brains just work a little bit similarly to mine. And here's what I found that often it's best to start at the end and work backwards. And for that, students need to start at the marking criteria and break down in detail exactly what the marker is going to be looking for in their work before they pick their topic or decide on their choice of whatever options it is they can choose from. Now, here's an example. If it's a type of narrative, let's say, like a short story, perhaps, one of the most open-ended tasks you can get, well, when students go through the mark scheme, they'll realize that their marks and their grades are less about the actual story or the characters and more about their ability to use a variety of sophisticated literary devices like imagery and symbolism, for example. Perhaps the story needs to have some sort of theme or message that comes through and therefore they need to think about making that weave throughout the plot or the characters. And that brings us nicely then to the planning. They don't want to be planning from the point of, hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna write about in my story. But they wanna come from the point of, okay, what sort of story will easily allow me to incorporate that variety of writing techniques? Or what sort of character would allow me to give some really interesting and detailed descriptions? What sort of setting would I be able to adapt my writing to in order to fulfill the style and the vocabulary needed, like using techie words for sci-fi or lots of extravagant details for a romance, perhaps. And then they can start to consider what their story could be about. Plus, now they actually also have like a kind of checklist to work with. They know what they need to be incorporating and what those certain key elements are, those skills or elements that are likely to be almost like a quiz show style sort of ding, ding, ding when the marker is going through their work and checking off against the marking guide and grading it. So really it's not about pondering on a main task like, oh, what country should I investigate for my geography project? Or hmm, what historical leader should I choose for my inquiry? Or what on earth should I write a short story about? Your team needs to figure out what needs to be in that finished product and then ask themselves, okay, what topic will give me the easiest and most effective way to produce that? Or what's gonna give me the most and highest quality opportunities to convey those skills or those elements? And this is what I sort of call the science behind creativity. And actually it's not just for students who aren't particularly creative, but it's for those students who also are the creative types because then it will still provide them with that checklist I mentioned to see which of the wonderful and creative ideas that they're able to come up with is going to serve them best when it comes to the marking and their final result. 
I'm Katie Price, great transformation expert, and if you'd like lots more hints, tips, and strategies, and insights that'll help your team tackle essays and assignments, then head on over to my blog at www.greattransformation.com.au forward slash blog. And wherever you're watching this, scroll down, please leave me a comment, give this video a like, or go ahead and share it with anyone else you think might find it useful. And until next week, let's make this a fantastic week.